windshield once again as we wrap up the executive branch we'll wind things down with the overall powers of the president and the presidency in action powerpoint or the powers of the presidency um, as you see right here two, two of our former presidents uh, George W. Bush and Bill Clinton The U.S. president is regarded as one of the most powerful individuals and in uh, in elected officials in the world today. They are the service head of the executive branch. They enforce and administer all laws made by Congress. They're created by the delegates of the Constitutional Convention as a compromise to help better organize the federal government. Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution comprises the executive powers of the United States. The Constitution gives the President power to execute all laws. They have to faithfully carry out the laws made by Congress, not of an agenda of their own. And the presidential powers have expanded significantly over the last 50 or 60 years. And here is President Nixon showing his approval of the growth of presidential power. Executive orders are official documents that the president carries out um, for a government operation or activity. Um, Kosovo and Vietnam uh, were to fight wars. Kosovo was an executive order by President Clinton. Vietnam was an executive order um, initially by President Kennedy. Another e example of an executive order was President Franklin D. Roosevelt's uh, executive order to put Japanese Americans in internment camps after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Signing statements um, of, or executive agreements give the president the ability to define and hone laws written by Congress. Um, defining torture by, you know, what, what torture was with waterboarding and things in the Bush administration are examples of this. These executive agreements can also be with foreign countries as they develop diplomacy and trade relations with other nations. The president can remove and appoint f major federal officials, such as the um, head of the CIA. The president has several other diplomatic and military powers. The president shares the treaty-making power with and capability with the Congress. Um, he is the chief diplomat of the U.S. government. Executive agreements are between the U.S. and the U.S. President, more specifically, and foreign countries. And the uh, President can also choose whether the United States will recognize another foreign country's existence. The President is the Commander-in-Chief. The President possesses almost unlimited military power, which is a major exercise in his strength. However, Congress still has the ability to declare war. Legislative and judicial powers of the, of the president. The Constitution gives the president important legislative and judicial powers as part of the checks and balances procedure of operating the federal government. The president gives that State of the Union address. He can urge and recommend legislation to be carried out. The president does not make laws, but he influences the laws. The power of the veto, the president can also uh, veto or deny a law being made from Congress. The President appoints Supreme Court justices and federal judges. They, got, they have to be confirmed by the U.S. Senate, but they were appointed by the President of the United States. There are certain things of power that the President may have, like great offices and yachts and automobiles and Air Force One, the airplane, 
in Camp David, which is a resort or vacation spot for the president. Um, they have good uh, health care, government health care, um, and they have a fairly large expense account as well. As you can see here, President Carter uh, working at the Camp David Accord with Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat of Israel and Egypt, respectfully, back in the 1970s. And that is the powers of the president.